Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, um, Reverend Hugo. Uh, always a pleasure to listen to you. Opal drives hunger. Um, thank you also for reminding us uh, uh, on how to deal with mindset. Really, I've, I've had you define uh, what it means to be a catalyst, and um, I probably will not go into all of that because I will be boarding my flight at about 5.20. Um, so uh, I might just have about 30 minutes to discuss with us on the controversial journey of a Catholic, Catholic youth. Um, all of you have had uh, what have been described as uh, uh, a catalyst. A catalyst I'll be discovered as one who precipitates a change, a revolution, or something, somebody that makes something happen. And if that is the case, uh, then um, we can put everything together and talk about the journey of someone who makes things happen. And then what makes it controversial? Why will it be said to be controversial? I'll start by telling you a story. Um, it may look like fiction, but it's a real life story. A certain man, young man, went to his uncle and said, Uncle, I'm tired of life. And his uncle said to him, You shouldn't be. This is the way we are. We were instructed uh, to be poor, to serve other people. To live, we are the poor of the society. I if you're from the southeast, you know that there's, there's a group of people that call the Osu, the caste, the outcast. And so the, the young man was very restless, just like the, the average youth on this platform. He said, Your uncle, I don't believe you. I think there's a lie in it. And so the uncle took him to a soothsayer. So when he got to the soothsayer, um, the uncle said, the soothsayer will read your palm and he will tell you what your future will be like. And so when he got to the soothsayer, he said, soothsayer, read my palm. And the soothsayer read his palm and the soothsayer said to him, from what I see on your palm, my friend, you'll be poor, you'll be miserable, you will not be able to achieve anything until you are fought. And the young man said, oh, I'm 32. So um, in a couple of years, I should be over with this problem. Then I'll become, you know, rich. I'll become anything I want to be. And the sister said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell you, you will not be able to achieve anything. Because at 40, you would have been used to it. And what's the story? The story is about mindset. The story is about being uh, allowing the society to define you, allowing circumstances to define you, not being able to agree that certain things are possible. And uh, Leko was trying to ask me to tell my story. I don't have a story to tell. The story I have to tell is the story that Jesus Christ said to us that all things are possible. All things are possible. But if talking about Christ is far-fetched, uh, you all of you on the platform and those listening, you are great scholars. You remember a certain man, a right, it's called Napoleon Hill. He says something. He said, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, they can be achieved. And so to all this, this evening, I'd like to tell you something. The mind is such a powerful instrument. So it can deliver to us anything we want. It can deliver to us anything. But we have to believe that what we want is possible. Because as the Bible said, all things are possible to them that believe. To everyone that believes. And therefore, what is the, the story of the youth? The youth, you will only get what you expect. 
who go try to build on it, you will get what you expect. Because listen, what are we talking about in this journey is outcomes. And, and you see, anticipations are very vital to achieving any outcome. And I'm going to, I'm going to validate you with the research by a hospital in, in Dallas. It was documented that that people used to believe that information flows from the brain from the outside world into the brain. Then in the course of their research, they realized that that most of us respond to what the brain as experiences on a daily basis. And the brain uses the previous happenings or previous experiences to expect the next outcome. They call it expectancy theory. So they said the story, and I'm going to read the, 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 what the scientists concluded. He said, doctors in Texas studying the effect of arthroscopic knee surgery adopted three procedures. One, scraping the knee, the knee joint. Two, washing out the joint. Or the third one, doing nothing. So they said, during the doing nothing stage, they anesthetized the patient and pretended to have carried out a surgical operation on the knee. The brain expected the surgery to improve the knee and it did. So they asked the question, why does the brain, through a lifetime of events, our brains actually learns to what to expect next, whether it happens that way or not. And because our brain expects something will happen a certain way, we often achieve exactly what we anticipate. This is why it's important to hold positive expectations in our minds. Conclusion, therefore, we must condition our mind to positives and non negative. So when we replace our old expectations with more positive ones, when we begin to believe what, that what we want is possible, our brain will actually, actually take over the job of accomplishing that possibility for us. In other words, our brain will actually expect to achieve that particular outcome. So what is summary for me? I said for myself, it didn't mean that you can be anything you want to be. If you only believe with sufficient convictions, sufficient convictions, and act in accordance with your faith for whatever the mind can achieve, can conceive and believe the mind can achieve, says Napoleon Hill. Say Napoleon here. And then another writer therefore concluded, Richard Brown. He says, sooner or later, those who win are those who think they can. And I'll tell you the truth today, young men and young women. Don't get into any activity, merely just to compete. Compete to win. So most people fail because they lack the skills not because they lack the skills, not because they don't have the aptitude to reach their goal, but because they simply do not believe that they can reach it. So we must believe we can if we must win. And that's where Ugochiku calls it hunger. And so the practice today is young lady with the earpiece, Young man watching by the sidelines. So get in front of a mirror. Speak to the person. Bishop used to tell us this. Speak to the person in that mirror. I remember Bishop telling us this as a young man growing up, praying one after one evening. Bishop walked across into the auditorium and prayed with us. And when he finished praying with us, he said, Listen. 
you must learn to say to yourself, when you get to say to yourself as many times as you can, tell yourself, no matter how bad it is, no matter how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. At that time, we used to envision, we used to ask every time, Sharaton was just newly built on Mamladi Bankam 20. We used to, on going to camp, we used to say, when are we going to have enough money to walk into Sheraton and drink a bottle of Coke? Some of you, you will, you will, you will have a laugh. Here is CNC say this, but that's how it was. That's how it was. But when we heard our father speak to us, he said, get it on, stand in front of the mirror, say to yourself, no matter how bad, no matter how difficult, I'm going to make it. And he said to us, listen, you'll be amazed at what happens to your self-confidence when you stand eyeball to eyeball with yourself and you forcefully tell yourself what you're going to do. So whatever your dream is, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and declare that you're indeed going to achieve it, no matter the price, no matter the price. That's one part of it. The second part of it is what I'm going to tell you. And I'm going, when I finish saying that, we can then talk about if there's any life story to tell. Listen, James 1.25, he says something. He said, listen, the, it is the doer of the world that is blessed. It is the doer of the world that is blessed and not the hearer. I'll say it again. It is the doer of the world that is blessed and not the hearer. It is the doer of the world that is blessed and not the hearer. Friend, I have been to many business schools. I've been to Hannah. I've been to IAC. I've been to Columbia. I've been to Chicago. I've been to Stanford. So I had nuggets, something. I receive have a business review. Newsletter every month. So it's, there are no lack of information. No lack of information. I have a library that has many books. No lack of income. But I found out that my problem is not a lack of information. It's about utilizing what I've had to take a step. Every journey must begin with a step. Visions, the die as visions, dreams die as visions that are dreams unless there's an active step to achieve that. And so he said the, the hearer deceives himself. The hearer deceives himself if after hearing he does not utilize what he heard to do something. And so what is the controversy with the young person? The young person's controversy is in the fear of failure. The fear yeah, but people talked about it. He talked about rejection. And <laughs> what is rejection? Oh, 
God wants you to take a step of faith. The young person, listen, is endowed with every capacity necessary to grab the world. I was running late for a flight to connect my flight between the between uh, Malaysia and Singapore. Because there was a storm, and so the flight was delayed. And then what happened? But the young man said, oh, you need to move fast. You need to move fast. But I realized that at some stage, because the work was long, I could not keep up with the pace of the young people. And when I got into the plane, I was asking myself, I said, whoa. Yeah, I was saying that there's a, suddenly there's a huge rain out there. Uh, it, oh. Oh. Uh, it's raining. It's raining quite, quite heavily. just started, and uh, I guess it will cause some destruction. But what I was trying to say is that the dip on the journey, I couldn't keep up with the pace of the young people running to the airplane. But I looked myself at 59, maybe 30 years ago. I could have dashed to the airplane. I could have been faster than anyone. What does that show you? Listen, young people that are on this platform, you are in your prime. You can achieve anything you want. You can get anything you want done. That I can assure you. And there are no limits to what you can achieve. You know why? Oh, the reason is because You have the endowment spiritual. You have the endowment physical. Never you think that those two can work together. No? They can. The wise man told her it is good for a young man to bear his body in his youth. Sitting quietly before the Lord. What he means by yes, bearing his body is not about suffering. It's about listen. You have the strength to carry any, any, any assignment, to carry anybody, to make a success of anything that has been brought your way. And what, what divinity does is that it makes sure that it throws obstacles, what looks like obstacles are, you know, along your way. They are not obstacles. They are stepping stones. They are stepping stones for you to climb the ladder. Because a wise man rightly said, you don't deserve anything you're not willing to fight for. Every, every opportunity to grow, every apple hanging on a tree, every fruit, are there a multiplied number of people willing to plug them? And divinity only support those who who are willing to fight for what has been allotted to them. And if you are not willing to put up a fight in this world, then you are not fit to be called. A member of the beloved. Because, listen, the, the basic advantage we have is that we are part of the beloved. And God, who has called us, has endowed us specially. And that is that you and I, you and I, have what it takes to become what we need to be. But I also tell you this. I had this in a movie I watched some years ago. And I, I personalized it. 
He said to me, CNC, don't lose yourself in the temporary. For no one has ever seen, no one has ever heard, and no one has ever imagined what God has prepared. These words, you know, it healed me from emotional wreck. I don't know how many of you, a bit of the journey of life, at some point, I've been working in a bank. I believe rightly that it is possible to own a bank. That's all I put together. I put together a team. I put together a strategic document. We put together the, the living savings we had. We went to Central Bank and said to CBN, give us a start to. CBN looked at our strategic document and said, your strategic document is wonderful. Am I losing? But you came back. Am I losing you? I think it's better now. It's better now. Okay. And so, having put together our our document, we approached the central bank. We put together a group of elders to be on the board. One of the mistakes I made, because someday Bishop called me and said, who asked you to put the following on the board? Did you pray about them? I said, no. How did you come about those names? But that's a story for another day. But the point is that after all of these, the license was given to us and several issues came up. At the end of the day, I lost the money, I lost the license, I lost friends. I got stranded in one location, in one part of the world. Everybody around me all the people who wanted to be executive directors in the bank, GMs, they walked away. Some even called me names and said, you, you are too ambitious. You are too ambitious. How do you expect to walk out from a bank and suddenly you just own a bank? And these words, I heard this word, don't lose yourself in the temporary. For no one has ever seen, no one has ever heard, and no one has ever imagined what God has prepared. Just because things don't go the way you want, doesn't mean it's not going the way it should. Just because things don't go the way you want, or didn't go the way you want, doesn't mean it's not going the way it should. And we go call it, find your purpose. And so when I had these words, I told myself, I said, why am I, why am I trying to kill myself? Why am I sitting in the cave and crying my eyes out? Why am I thinking that it was all over? Because everything had gone. I had sold everything I owned. I sold everything, including lands. The only thing I didn't sell was the property I was living in. I sold everything. I couldn't pay school fees of my daughter. And one day my daughter asked me, Daddy, why not? And I couldn't take it. But from the blues, you know, the man of God called me and said, Where are you? I said, I'm stranded somewhere. I said, Come home. I'm saying all of this because you see, there is a value experience in this controversial journey. That's a cave experience when everybody will leave you and, and you think that it's all over. It's never over. Just because things are not working the way you want does not mean that it's not going the way it should. Because things will always go the way they should. It will always go the way they should lie because God is in me. And because God is in me, you must understand that 
is faithful and he has committed to working with you all the way. And so finally, let me make this point. And that's it. The point trying to revalidate what I said earlier about doing. Listen. There is one side of life that seems to be eluding us as we grow. As a father, I see that I see it in my children and I try to make them find a way to kill that attitude. And that is two things. Number one is honor. Number two is kindness. I want to tell you young people, honor is a seed. Kindness is equal to esteem. And if you if you can look over and ask yourself, why should I practice kind? You practice kindness because the God is a kind God. You practice kindness because in the journey that you are on to, if you are not if you are not walking in kindness, you may not experience kindness. I'm taking it slow because I want I want you to pause and hear me again. Kindness is not a cliche. Kindness. It's not what we do to in order to be seen or known. Kindness is part of the nature of the believer. You practice kindness through acts of refreshing people. The Bible, in the book of Second Timothy, chapter one, verse sixteen. All oh, right, into Timothy, who was a young pastor like you and like you, and including myself because I'm young today. He said, "The Lord grant mercy to." The household of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chain. In the Greek translation of Onesiphorus, Onesiphorus means bring out profit. Bring out profit. In Proverbs 11, verse 25. New Living Translation, the Bible has said, the generals will prosper. Those who refresh all that will themselves be refreshed. I want you to know, gentlemen and ladies, 
that the cure will be satisfied have is in refreshing all that. If we learn to refresh people around us, we'll be refreshed. Our rest and peace of mind that enables us to be constructive in putting things together. God, I believe I'm talking to a Christian. Some got out of rest because one is that he cares for Paul has to had to call out on Lucifer and say that the Lord should grant him mercy. As a young person, you are 17, you are 18, you are 19, you are 20, you are 30, or you are 33. You must look back on your journey and ask, who have I shown kindness? There's a peace that comes with showing kindness. When you show kindness, your sleep is sweet. When you show kindness, you walk like God. Learn to show kindness. Um, number two, in your journey, Plant honor. Honor is a seed. Plant honor. Plant honor. Honor. Your father and your mother, the Bible has said so. Your parents. Physical and spiritual. You must honor them. And that's why it's a seed, because you are going to become a parent. But you see, the Bible has said that that thing has a, a promise to you. That it may be well with you and not, and that your days may be long. To be well with you means to be well with you in every area. On your employer. Because someday, I'm going to be in a position of being an employer as a program. So we must practice honor. Honor your pastors. For those of you who are premise and non premise that I our bishop is 70 years. Tomorrow he celebrates. Part of the honor is not the, the gift alone, it's the good wishes, the prayers, the joy you express. Because as you do that, you are, you are planting a seed. I will speak for you. One of the things I will tell you, again in closing, is that I am a believer in, in the story of the underdog. And there is no underdog here. Yeah. All of you are great people. 
Now listen, you must understand that there's a promise that has been put on your life. And that promise, whether you want it or not, it has been made. And the Bible says that there are yea and amen in Christ. In other words, they have to come to pass. But you have to make a choice to agree to have that promise or to invalidate. And so, whether you are born in the village like I was, or you are born in the manger like Jesus was, you can shake the world. You can shake the world. But you can only shake the world if you get out of your comfort zone. What is the comfort zone? The zone of fantasy. The zone of, it's good to hear motivational speakers, the zone of PowerPoints. The zone, hear me again, the zone of PowerPoint will try to mentor a lot of people. There are cliches out there. Fancy cliches. Moderated and unmoderated cliches. Biblical quotes. Memorial verses of the scripture. But they mean nothing if you don't run with them. They mean nothing if you don't run with them. Ugo gave you an example. Guys. There is no age reserved for responsibility. It was at 17 that David announced himself on the war stage. By killing God. People tried to dissuade him and he said they are not a cause if you don't stop following the crowd you can't break through the time has to come when you turn your face and say listen if i die i die if i perish i perish but you know you won't die you won't perish the reason is because the name of the Lord is at stake. It's at stake. It's at stake in your life. And so for some of us who came from the, the so-called daughters, hear me today. People who change the world are not necessarily sons of the rich or daughters of the rich. But if they were born with silver or gold spoon, it's because they chose, like Ugo Chupu said, to become poor. They chose to become hungry and then search for a solution for that hunger. So, my father, before he died, he said, I know I can't. I'm not bequeathing anything to you. But before I die, I'll be alive and see you do A, B, C. He began to name them. And I said to him, you are not dying. So Paul still writing to the young man in First Timothy chapter 6. He said, fight the good fight of faith. This scripture is not just about faith of Christianity, faith of religion. Because everything in the world is working to condition you to believe that you cannot be more than the society has guaranteed to be. There are two retaining wars in every man's life, 
the retaining wall that God built around you so that you don't fall over, and the one that the enemy built around you so that you don't move forward into the next stage of your life. You must determine to get out of the retaining wall of the enemy, the wall of impossibility, the wall of my father was poor. I can't be any more than oh, the wall of this is who we are, the wall of <laughs> otherwise after some years you will get used to it. Remember the story of the young man who went to see the seer. See I read my palms. See I said from what I see you will be miserable, you will be poor until you are fought. And you began to rejoice. When I'm fought, everything will be over. But the seer said to him, no, no, no. By the time you are fought, you will get used to it. Young people don't get used to anything. Don't get used to anything. Let me tell you the final secret. Now we're going to revolutionize this baton that you are being handed over to, handed to, handed to. Your father in the Lord is 78. Structures are being put in place so that the entire ministry is handed over to you. Now listen, the weight of the ministry may collapse on you if you do not actively see yourself as being in charge. How do people see themselves as being in charge? No, it's, right. it's okay. Uh, I'm, go I'm going to pause. I'm going to pause. All I want to, uh, I want you to know is that God is with you. God is with you, and that yeah. That's it. Whether you're in the valley now, or you're in the cave, or you're on the mountain, God is with you, and because yeah. He's with you, it is possible. Yeah. You just have to keep that dream alive. Keep working on it. Keep working on it. Don't give it up at all. Because the moment you give it up, death stares you in the face. Terror mm. died. Mm. And terror died. Is, is one part of the scripture that is very difficult to absorb. They were on a mm. journey. They got to a place, luscious, green, and all of that. They settled in there. Because there is a purpose. Stretch out for Abraham and the rest. They stayed in there. Terror had to die. Don't let your staff decay on this journey. Don't get used to, oh, it didn't work yesterday, therefore it will not work tomorrow. No, 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 no. It is possible. Spend your resources. That's the point I was trying to make. I beg of you people, beg of you, put your money where your mouth is. Put your money, invest in your future, and your future is between yourself and the kingdom. Between yourself and the kingdom. Because once you take hold, of functioning, making the kingdom function. And what is the kingdom? The marketplace is waiting for you. It's waiting for you. It's waiting for you. I wish all of you well. I wish you well. I'm so sorry. I'm in transit. Uh, I'll get some today. And I'll be in service tomorrow and uh, probably shake hands with uh, any one of you that uh, I can see his face or headquarters. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm still here. My flight has not been called, so uh, I will enjoy the next session over two people. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Like, I am so excited that I could be sharing uh, the stage. So even having a conversation with you today is really awesome. Like, we learned so much, but I think the strongest thing that you tried to tell us, which is believe. Like, if you truly believe that you can do it then you can right impossibility is nothing for people who have this kind of mindset right and all the people who have ever succeeded they were the ones crazy enough to believe that they could do it so thank you so much sir, for everything thank you so much for really really putting things down for us we're going to put some recaps up so that everybody can definitely see all the things um that you have taught us today thank you so much we appreciate you for coming for being a, a speaker for us today we appreciate you please i want us to put some emojis in the chat box in the comment section for uh